Microphone muted. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Sorry we're running late. Uh, we've been taking a lot of inspiration from ESL lately, but we are here. I'm AJ Zero with Failed Destiny, Zedekiss on the stream tonight to bring you week four, aka the start of the second round robin for the Batty Overwatch League. I didn't really Hello. give you any where to kind of cut it after that. I just kind of said everything and it was done. I'm sorry. I was, I was bad. I'm not a paid professional, folks. <laughs> uh, so, neither of us are. <laughs> so going at it here, we've got... Um, now that every team's played every team once, I think we can kind of talk about the balance of power in the league a little bit more, which I think is you know, a bit more exciting than how it was beforehand. And in this first match here, we've got first seed, sadistic, autistic, and... Bone Zone. The Bone Zone. They are currently third, eight points behind the April Wizards, uh, who will be obviously playing game two against Mercy Shore. Yeah, looking at the big picture here, the one thing that really surprises me about the first round Robin is that Sadistic Autistic is still in first. That doesn't surprise me. But the fact that they were the only team that didn't blow out Mercy Shore. They had a, I believe, 35-25 win versus them, whereas Mercy Shore's other two games were... 60-0 and 50-10. Or maybe 60-10? I think it was 60-0 and 60-10. Uh, not good. And you would think just by virtue of not having those extra, you know, 20, 30 points from a Mercy Shore blowout, that Sadistic Autistic would probably be second or third. But they've played their best two series versus the other two competitive teams. So I'm curious to see if something changes going forward if, you know, yeah, we've got a, a lot of the season left, as this is just the first round robin getting into playoffs. So still, anything could happen with uh, everyone going into playoffs. More people are getting in practice. We had a long break, and we'll have a longer break when Christmas and New Year's comes up. So the, the, the large lead that's currently held uh, doesn't have to necessarily stay large. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, and all things considered, it is very close between the top three teams. I could reasonably see any of those teams taking the top seed. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It'll be interesting to see if things change up, especially this first game. If they have, uh, if Bone Zone and Sadistic Autistic, if it, it is one-sided, uh, Bone Zone could effectively take the lead here. So, starting off, uh, Bonnie, uh, one of the more interesting maps, a team, if they take the first point, usually travels pretty far uh, up until that uh, last corner or second to last corner, either way. So we'll see what kind of first push comes out of uh, uh, Bone Zone. Yeah, and... After a little bit of time to kind of research the patch changes by now, so I expect we're going to see slightly more normalized picks, which we see here with two Soldier 76s. We're going to see a lot of that tonight, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and Soldier Bozo right now does so much damage. He's seen a lot of play yeah. everywhere. And there's just a bomb rush coming out of Bones, but 30 goes down right away. That's the DPS on. They're getting trapped really far away from their side of the map here. They're yeah, they're going behind. The this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, but it looks really planned. Like, it looks like a very successful push coming out of Bone Zone. Um, yeah, U Tech goes down, Team goes down, they are out of healers. Down. Just a lot of damage being traded, uh, some contesting of the point, but the bar hasn't actually moved, and that's almost a complete wipe. Uh, Thrifty yeah. doing what he can as Soldier up top. That was good objective discipline out of Sadistic Autistic, which is something that has gotten them to the first seat. They don't have people step off the point for no reason. They never give up a single inch to the Bone Club, who had zero focus fire once they got onto that point. I mean, they were already down a man, they lost 30 early in that push, and they ended up in a position where they had to fully commit to it, and they just weren't able to do anything in the 5v6. Yeah, as a team, they look very coordinated when it comes to their damage, focusing targets. They're very very unfocused it seems like and again we see a, a very what well, looks like a two-pronged attack coming out and people are just slowly getting picked off on bone zones team 
It looks like another successful defense out of Sadistic Autistic. Yeah, that was a bit more scattered of a fight. The thing that really stood out to me there was once again, 30 got picked far away from his team early in the fight. Yeah. And the, the thing and that makes the, the soldier so good is that he puts out sustained high damage for a long period of time. Like, soldiers gotta get in there before you're loaded and die early, kind of hero. Like, an assassin would be in the legend or something. Right. So, 30 dying early, especially the star player of this team, really hurting this team. And now they're at a big ult advantage going into this fight. Yeah, still very coordinated, and uh, 30 being ulted, the... Oh, there's a good explosion out of Albano Joe. Creates a little bit of pressure, but only gets one kill. Yeah, the ulted uh, soldier ended up taking uh, a lot of damage away as Salvo blocked it with uh, D.Va's suppression. But a contested point that's slowly being lost by Bone Zone. Or sorry, Bone Zone taking from Sadistic Autistic. Yeah, and they solid gap the there. I was I was a little wrong when I said they were at a big ult advantage going into that. They had multiple people behind me, so it ended up being like eight or nine alts total going into that fight. And most importantly, Thirty and T Mac had the Anna Soldier alt combo available, which is that's the thing right now. Right. Put the Nano Boost on the Soldier, activate COD mode, and he just takes auto fight. shoots and kills everyone that's uh, within sight distance as long as nothing's blocking his damage. Yeah, it's something we haven't talked about. Bone Zone once again running three tanks with 30 being their only DPS. And that's something that, from what I've gathered, has caught on a bit at higher elo in pro play, is that the three tanks seem to be more of a thing than it was before the patch. Yeah, the damage dealers right now, uh, there's one specific one, and that's Soldier. And everyone else just isn't doing as much damage by comparison, and the tanks are uh, acting more like bruisers than really meat shields. A lot of really interesting coordination coming out of um, Bone Zone now. They keep going in one by one at the point and dying. And a pretty successful hold here from Sadistic Autistic. Yeah, that, that turned really good once Sadistic kind of zeroed out of the point. And now they're sitting at a really good ult position going into this next fight. Four ults and now here you are at 87. Yeah, and Tree's just going to apply damage continuously on that Junkrat with his uh, bounces, so he'll be able to uh, get that up pretty quickly as well. Boss actually trades himself for u to start that fight off, which is a definite win for Bone Zone. And an ult coming out, and it takes down <laughs> one, two? Two. Salvo takes down two as Diva, but there comes the res out of Crystallize. And it looks and, like uh, they've got another hold for Sadistic. Yeah. And they're slowly pushing that cart back, which, I mean, it just is losing time for uh, Bone Zone. They just can't get to the point anymore. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this map has changed that people can now successfully hold at this midpoint gap. Normally, this is a lot easier for the offensive team. Yeah, I think this just needs to be credit to Super Sadistic. They're playing really well. An ult coming out of Utech. Counter alt out of Zenyatta. Uh, alts everywhere and just very yeah, the ult's sloppy. Everywhere, but yeah, it, it didn't seem like there was much of a plan out of Bone Zone there. I'm still not exactly sure what they were hoping to do. Although they have come close to establishing control of this card, but they do not have the health five this is about to stick out. It's just about no Joe on the point, and he's getting pushed way the hell back. Yeah, a lot of suppressive fire coming out of uh, Bone Zone, but ultimately an unsuccessful push after multiple alts blown. I think D.Va just being a lot of the damage is just slowing any Ooh. And that's a real big movement. on the tree just got onto Albino Joe because that buys so much time after the fight was already over. I mean, we're now oh. looking at maybe three fights remaining for Bone Club to get to this next objective. Yeah, and Sadistic Autistic has Three alts available, four on the opposite side, and uh, we might see another trade of alts coming up really quickly here. And everyone's just sitting. Oh, Ball of 60 gets picked though to start this off, but so does 30 again. Yeah, There's Salvo a nice solos him. him. He gets both the healers, but it might not matter. He's already two down for Bone Zone. An alt coming out. 
Oh, Takes down no one. one. That was really and... rough from Albato Joe. I feel like that's the difference between a really good D.Va player and an okay D.Va player. As, I mean, look how many people fell on Sadistic Autistic. Four fell during that ult. It didn't all necessarily die from the D.Va, but the damage and pushing people around, forcing them to run away, just caused them to take damage and go down. And uh, just, they moved yeah, that, a that lot really more bad. in that last seconds. Yeah, Albino Joe, ever since he's kind of switched to being a D.Va player in the last month or so, he's had some very impactful ults, whether he's getting kills or just creating big zones for his team. And I thought that was going to be a lost fight. They had lost two so early in that fight, yeah. they weren't in a particularly good position to capitalize with the four remaining, but they set up good ults, and they do cap the point. Utech uh, ulti, Utech drops keeping the players alive, and yeah. taking down Thrifty. <laughs> And yeah, this fight's getting just some damage is being traded. This is just because you really pushed off of this card here. Uh, Bone Zone needs to just collapse on the healers, but we're kind of solo holding the card there, but they did this. Chris yeah. goes down, had his ult up, but no one on the side of uh, Sadistic Autistic has dropped since then. And Bone Zone has collapsed back to uh, the point. It looks like they're going to try and rush from above, drop down onto the cart. Uh, we see that Ball Sexy is there to meet them. Splitter and 30 look like they're going on the flank. They have the two ults available for their team, so they should really create a lot of pressure for the four on their team they establish on the carts. It looks like that's what they're doing, but they are being chased around up there. Crystallize is playing really far forward uh, next to the cart just to provide some damage and healing. I was er, afraid he was going to get picked out really quickly. Dead. Now, Furrier pops the Transcendence just to stop the card from moving, doesn't really do a lot. And there goes Salvo, clearing things out with his Diva ult. And Jim is going to whip the hammer down. This is a ton of space for the card to push. Yeah, they just opened up the map a lot, surprisingly. And Bone Zone just trading a lot of damage, getting a lot of distance on this push. Yeah, they, they got and no really one wants to step up to the card. Lies. Crystallize went down before anyone else on this team did, so he didn't have a chance to pop their resurrect. Although, look at him, he's coming out of spawn right here. He's probably going to have to pop a desperation res here. And there it is, yep. Yeah, and he does. Uh, two. It gets two, and it does stop the card from moving. There's still good ult from Bone Club. Yeah, but there are three the people down. Remaining? It would be a god play for Salvo to stop this card from pushing, and that's, that's the first side of this map. Own zone, getting the full points. Yep, a little awkward, well. but... Solid win. Yeah. They look very coordinated as a team. I th I think just focusing damage. And we'll see what... what oh, the Ana ult. Yep, this was the one after Albino and Joe got his zone and everyone out of there. Thirdy was able to just rush forward and just really tear through that team. I and almost the default actually that. helped propel him around the bus to be able to shoot more people. Which is not something you would have expected. It almost killed him, but... Is there damage uh, reduction for how much is taken with the Ana ult? I don't believe so. I think it's just a health boost. Okay. Because, yeah, he if he went down from that ult, he would have just gotten one or two people, and that would have been it. Correct. So, there is damage reduction from the Ana ult. Thank you, voice in the sky. A really, really interesting play of the game. A lot of unintended uh, kills. Yeah. I'm not excited for this Soldier 76 meta. Like, play of the game is just supposed to be about, like, flashy headshots or, like, hammer down that hits, like, two people at the edge of its range, not I put my mouse in their general vicinity and kill their healers. Wait, are we not playing Call of Duty anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, I think you're right. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of soldier, both on defense, both on or defense and offense, as the damage is quite insane. Uh, and maybe continue to see the Ana go along with it. He got ulted twice in that game instead of the Reinhardt. They were be able able to make these. I think on both both alts. So we'll see what what comes out of the teams. Um, this time we see Bone Zone. Running two healers, uh, two tanks, and two damage healers. We'll see if they're able to hold a little bit more successfully than 
the District Autistic who had... Or did they have two? I forget. Yes, they did. They were running the Junkrat Soldier. So okay. Two DPS has been the standard so far for defense. Ah, uh, and it's three tanks on offense. Yeah, and that's not super surprising that they're using the three tanks. Even before the patch, when teams were running the three tanks, which was something that Bone Zone had liked a bit more than the other teams, that was typically most effective on offensive payload maps. Gotcha. And uh, it looks like Valkyra still has to pick the hero, and the doors have been open. Um, no yeah, one very for surprising. A pause. Watching your back. Not sure what's going on there. Oh, he has picked Lucio, and uh, looks like everything's in order. I'm surprised as to how uh, Bone Zone is deciding to try and hold this point, as they're not actually anywhere on the point, and quite separated when it comes to the team members. Oh, Utek yeah, they... flies over. And the fighting begins! Jim running around, swinging his giant hammer. Yeah, it's a very aggressive Reinhardt coming out of Jim. A teammate goes down. 30 is really low on McCree. Yeah, uh, Solo goes soldier, down. Though. The point is contested, and Sexy jumps off of it. Yeah, there's like three members of both teams on this point right now. This is that really awkward point when no one's really sure whether they want to contest or not. But it looks like that's going to be a hole for now out of Bone Club. Yeah, not the same coordination out of Sadistic Autistic as we saw from Bone Zone, but a little bit more focused as they force people away from um, the control point. I do want to know, Utech had a really good start on this Mercy, let his team take a lot of intelligent tokens. He got the first ult for the game, uh, the res charge. That's how three ult available for Bone Club. They have a huge advantage in this next fight. Yeah, and here comes yeah, the Diva ult. Really yeah, he, he gets crystallized! He gets the Anna. Very important. Mm. There he gets picked and Utech immediately pops that res. Uh, Bone Club is very committed to holding this choke here. And they're doing something. They're gonna pick out a they're gonna pick out a Sexy. And it looks like... Albano Joe going for the chase into the room, they get TK Thrifty, and that's going to be a hold. That's a that's another really good hold. Out of yeah, and that zone. was actually a really good res on Utech while I have a sec. That's one yeah. where a lot of like Bad Mercy players are like, oh, it's only one person, I'm going to hold this early in the fight. Like, no, you, you needed 30 up, you needed that high noon, and you're going to easily be able to get 50% of that res back before another fight breaks out if you win that fight. Yeah, a hold like that can mean a lot, and he died early enough that if he tried to wait for someone else to fall, he might not have gotten 30 back up. So you're still fighting a 5v6. So sometimes just getting that extra person up means world. A lot of damage coming down on this choke point, and I'm not seeing a lot of push come out. Yeah, Bono is finally chasing up onto Splinter. Salvo the first one to die, and Splinter with a nice aggressive rocket barrage. Not gonna pick up any kills though. Right now, Salvo. Oh, no, he's still dead. Yeah, there's a lot of damage being created. Shri goes, goes down. Um, but Bone Zone is very healthy. Like everyone is almost completely full. There's a gravitron uh, surge. It only hits teammate who's going to pop the transcendence as some teammates jump in with him. They get the kill on the thrifty senpai. Now it's yeah, just down here. <laughs> Oh, third. getting 30 with a clean 4k there, but there, and there's the res out of Utech, all his teammates alive. We might have a little bit of a uh, upset this week if this continues to go the, the way for the rest of the maps, as some really good holes out of Bone Zone. Yeah, Bone Zone, they should have a big hold the band going into this next fight. There's essentially one real team fight left here, and Salvo's gonna have it all. The tree is only 10% away. If they play it right, they should have a 3 on 2 ult advantage, with one of them being Albano Joe on the Diva, and another one impactful one on defense. I've got you in my side. Yeah, Thrifty yeah, rushes the, the ult. point. Salvo ult, but oh, Deanna. Two down. Oh, 3 down. Jim's dropping very quickly. That shield can't hold forever, and he drops. Only Albino Joe is alive. Oh, and they on get Albino point. Joe out of the mech at 99 on the ult. That would have bought so much time, but he did not get it. A and that's really a nice, cap. a really nice nano combo on the salvo. Variance into a cap, forces this to autistic, who are not going down without a fight. Yeah, they had 35 seconds left. 
So if they could have held just a little bit longer, that would have probably been the last push out of bone, uh, Sadistic Autistic. And now yeah, they they've got, got another into... three minutes to move it. Yep, they also would have gone into that like 30 second, just rush the point as fast as you can phase with a huge hold advantage. Would have basically been a guaranteed win on defense. Yeah. A really yeah, a good lot push of... out of Sadistic. Yeah, and a lot of really good damage coming out. Um, some members from Bone Zone, they're getting help healed slowly, but Splinter and 30 are dropping really low. Teammate yeah, taking Jim damage as well. It's really aggressive here, and now uh, Teammate 50 tosses a really weird D.Va ult, way too high, doesn't get anybody. But Jim does fall, counter D.Va ult. Yeah, Bionjo pops off, and that actually gets out Fiorior. But there's the and Thrifty drops, drops later too. Way. Five members drop on the side of Sadistic Autistic, so that's a really good hold for Bone Zone. Yeah, that all kind of started with Jim just going crazy on the flank. I don't didn't know what the hell he was doing, but his team collapsed just right for him. Yeah, a lot of damage coming forward, and we've got a couple of ults on both sides. Um, members getting really low on the side of Bone Zone. Splinter with a, a nice really good ult. Flank rocket barrage. That puts out a lot of damage. Now the cards are moving forward here. Yeah, it looks like they might be able to have this next point, we'll get sh which will give them even more time for another chance to tie this map with Bone Zone. Salvo playing very far forward as that next point is capped. Yeah, really big us to see this and play where we get that second point fairly quickly because, as we know, this third point is the hardest one to cap on Goombani. Bone Zone playing very scared with Albino Joe behind them. And yeah. he runs out. People aren't dropping yeah, was... on either side, and this card continues to move forward. That was not a good blink out of Bone Zone. They were not in position to uh, capitalize on what Albino Joe was doing, and they gave up half of the point for free. Now, Albino Joe is still on that point. He's getting zoned so far back, and it's just the healers in this card. Now, Albino Joe goes down just really good the bolt on this card, but it's a really fucking good one. 30 drops that is uh, ulted back. There's a Graviton Surge into the Diva ult. That Diva ult from Thrifty gonna pick up two. And this is looking like it's gonna be uh, mostly an ace. First, this got this go. The respawns have started. And there's the Nano on to uh, Soldier. Salvo. Yeah. And a very quick push. People need to get on this point now for Bone Zone in order to defend. Ooh, a tree has the rocket. Well, it doesn't do as much as it could have, but this is still looking good at forces this about this deck, who are keeping numbers on this card. Yeah, the one thing that I saw that happened there, uh, Utech went very aggressive as Mercy with a pistol, uh, and went down uh, trying to defend the point. Uh, this one by one death thing will not hold out very long. Uh, and here I think the point will actually get capped. Oh! As Jim goes past that... the point. That was bad. Jim, we'll see you uh, before the week five game start, I guess. We'll worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there were some very good plays in the game there, but not surprised it was Tree. He had a few really big rocket barrages, played some really aggressive flanks. Oh, and here at the end, to just clean up. Yeah, this, this was great. Uh, yeah, team support, uh, around... I, it looks like Tree might have actually landed the grenade that kind of changed yeah. the course of where Jim was charging there, so maybe that wasn't all on Jim. Epic. Yeah, if, if that's the case, that's a really good play out of Tree, just keeping anyone off the point. So yeah, that's, that's our first match, and uh, the teams are completely even. Yeah, and it was fairly close overall. I believe 30 seconds and a minute 30 remaining were our two scores there, which, I mean, obviously time doesn't matter here in the regular season. Yeah. But as but, a whole, the two teams can say they played about the same. And that's uh, kind of starting to look like a trend of the Batty Overwatch League is that everyone can play offense much better than they can play defense. Yeah, I think defense is a lot harder, and, and that's the point that Blizzard has come out and said is you can lose... One 
time on defense and the other team just gets a huge push out of it and that's the point defense is supposed to be harder and with these most recent patches it looks like it's a lot harder than they originally intended however this next game we're going to Li Zheng tower uh three cap points if one of the teams takes a, a point off the first map uh, this one, I think, is pretty infamous for being a giant cluster and a lot of really good plays just because of how open the maps really are. Yeah, this would probably be my favorite map in the game if any of the teams I've ever played on were good at it. <laughs> but, Low uh, ball. After uh, Team Swain convincingly got 0-3 versus Team Swain EU at the land, that was the last draw. I'm done. King of the Hill isn't for me anymore. Yeah, I think everyone enjoys these maps. It's just whether or not you can play them successfully, that almost doesn't matter. Everyone just enjoys the bloodbath that is Li Jing Tower. Yeah, Li Jing's great. I think I would... all of the King of the Hill maps kind of have no, that effect because everyone's down. just bodying forward to the map, trying to stay on, trying to get contest points, and then get murdered. Select your hero. This first map, one that we're starting on here, uh, I actually think is one of the most difficult um, to actually hold because of the angles of the map. It's not a perfect mirror, both teams come in at an angle. And it makes for some really interesting uh, team fighting dynamics. Yeah, there's so many ways you can approach here. So you can approach from high, you can approach from low. Like there's ways you you can get at the enemy team in a way they don't expect pretty consistently here on Control Tower, which is uh, hell if you're a spectator, but a lot of fun if you can get past that. Yeah. One thing that did change this week, too, with the SVL is uh, Sombra is enabled. And it looks like Salvo is going to be the first person picking her up. Um, Ooh, I meant to talk about her. I did not think... I was not sure if we were going to see much of her tonight. But Salvo is the kind of person who did not surprise me as playing the first Sombra of the year. Yeah, and in a really interesting route coming out of uh, Bone Zone. Coming behind everyone in the middle of the the map. Yeah. 30 goes down very early, and Albano Joe very far ahead because he's gonna lose the mech. It's probably his life immediately after. And, yeah, and he and, drops. And this point unlocks in one second, and almost. Oh, Thrifty goes down. Salvo and Crystallize are low. All of Sexy is also low. Barely gets out of that point in time. He's actually buying a lot of time for his team because they got a kill on himself. Oh, and oh, Jim barely steps off and gives up the point. That actually would give you a really good contest out of Bone Zone. They screwed it up. Yeah, and two people drop out of Sadistic Autistic with Tree and Salvo going down. And Jim just swinging the hammer. Jim calmed down. <laughs> taking the point. He never died after bouncing around on that corner. Really good retake. Yeah, you gotta be happy with that if you're bone zone. Screw up your original take, just retake the point sub 20%. Not bad. Really yeah, and Splinter is applying a lot of really good damage from up above, just keeping people that's back and off the point. Oh! Uh, ooh, that's a good hook. What they're getting a lot of good damage applied to his face. Now, Ball is sexy with a really nice little hook. He is zoning Bone Club back so far. And, that's and another retake. retake. With only one down at the time. And so many people are so low. This is a really far forward push out of uh, the Disic Autistic, but I really like this. When a team can control the point and push this far forward, this choke point is so hard to get through. Yeah, this is something you'll see a pro play a lot. It will always push on Li Zhang, especially if you're on control tower. Thrifty being really sneaky, hiding back as Jim pulls forward. Oh, and there's a big Graviton Surge in the window. Jim's gonna try to charge out of it just to create some pressure. But I don't think that's gonna matter. His team takes a lot of damage, but they somehow only lose one life now. That, now there's two. Yeah, and you attack yeah, Thrifty, now... Jim, and t almost fell. And then there goes Albino Joe. The only person that really survived that was Splinter. Yeah, it a might take really a minute, but when pull. you get back Graviton Surge, you always end up going full Drowning Pool. But there are a lot of alts out of Bone Zone for this next fight. Four 
to just one on Sadistic Autistic, so that's going to be their chance to push through here. And Alvaro Joe going to drop the Diva Alt. Not going to pick up anybody, but it does clear that choke point. And TK50 actually gets killed by 30 on the Reaper. And now he goes very far forward. And he's he's just pummeling people with that hammer there. Anna ult him. Oh, he's just beating down Ball of Sexy. Ball of Sexy refuses. Uh, he refused to go down and then falls off the edge. Unfortunate. I think uh, he got bounced off by uh, Lucio. And from 95 to 24, Bone Zone retakes the point. We'll see what they can do to hold. Flints are going up to probably provide some uh, damage and keep everyone back. Yeah, Gim gets then, pulled. This is for a big rocket barrage because he doesn't need to get one. And uh, Jim goes down early. That's not good for Bone Zone. And they currently only have two on the point. And make that one as Albino is going to get Now Tifa goes down. And there is just no objective discipline out of Splinter. What the hell are you doing? You can't drop that off. You got to get on the point, you dumb motherfucker. And he takes and... down two, but still loses as he wasn't above the point. You can be above that the is point and all. Such ult. a huge misplay out of Bone Zone. They have four members off of the point, just Ana and Zero Suit Diva holding the point at 95%. That's so easy. If Sadistic Autistic gets to that point, they're going to kill those squishies and retake and win. And they won't give you a chance to tap back. Yeah, that was a really sloppy end to what was really good play out of both teams to start that map. A lot of really good alts out of Ball of Sexy and... Or, sorry, I think it was Utech. I, di I didn't see Ball of Sexy. And then uh, Jim with that hammer. Providing a lot, but it, it didn't end up mattering as... Uh, but this is autistic. Just take it. Yeah, they can do a good about that. And it looks like we're gonna have a lot of the same picks to start with. Salvo starting once again as Sombra. And ooh, Albano Joe get picked super early at this. He's actually same with not 30. like a healer. And that's off. That should be a cap for Sadistic Autistic here. Although Bone Zone hasn't pushed through to the point, so they are content to fight this one out. They're providing a lot of damage, and no one's going down on Sadistic Autistic. He makes Splinter Jim. The mech drops, Jim goes down, and that should be a cap, and it is, the yeah, Sadistic is Autistic. Fairly clean there, and one thing of note, uh, Alano Joe is off of D.Va for I believe the first time tonight playing healer, which is like Utex switch onto a tank and Jimbo take over on that D.Va. Yeah, D.Va right now, a really big mainstay with uh, the pseudo buffs she received. Uh, a lot of health coming forward, and then just moving faster while she's shooting makes her just so much more mobile. Yeah, she's a big part of the three tank, that's what I say. Now, 30 pop in the high noon from real deep, looking for anything. So there's a nice trade that's out here that should stop 30 from getting any kills, and it will. Yeah, and that ult really didn't do much, that I saw at least. So, uh, a lot of contention. Uh, was that the Sombra ult to push them that back? That was the Sombra ult, and it looks like it succeeded. I also think that Salvo might be looking to switch here. Um, no, I stand correct, because Salvo in Sombra, so it wasn't just an ult die switch. Yeah, it was a really good pushback because it meant they could only shoot or swing some melee weapons, if anything. And so everyone retreated, buying 17 to 20% uh, percent of that control point. Oh, really a good big off. Graviton Surge on a tree. <laughs> oh, DK so fast. And taking basically down. a full ace. Yeah, Lucio got taken down before he could ult, which was very big. But still held by yeah, and Bone Jim Zone. Or so tries to make a solo, Jim tried to make a solo play there, but it might have been in his best interest just to die as fast as possible there to help us team get back to this final fight. They're at a big disadvantage. They will not have Jim for this fight. Pretty looking for a flanking high noon. Not going to get anything. And a defensive beat gets dropped. There is no time here. Jim is solo on this point, but his team trying to be dropping a lot of time. Oh, they all get there in time. If any of these members drop, it is going to be a cap for Sadistic Autistic. But they've got six up, and the room gets cleared. 
yeah, this was a much, much more convincing map from Sadistic Autistic. They were the better team. They From literally the first pick until the end of that map, they were the better team. And accordingly, they get the 100 to 0. Yeah, that was a really good first take. Ooh, we'll see what Drifty's got here. This is going to be his cleanup at the end. Yeah, this, this yeah, is the nail in the coffin. Uh, if any of you have ever Even watched a Packers radio game, that's normally where they say something about the dagger, I believe. <laughs> uh, he picks them to gets pulled, kills the person who pulled them, then goes on to kill two more people. Yeah, yeah good, good for TK50. Not been touching that May this week, so we don't have to see the Icicle Counter coming back much. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really good point. That was that was some really solid play. Uh, a little surprising that he went untouched for as long as he did. Even getting the pull off, I expected him to uh, die much sooner. But when you ignore a Reaper and he's ulting, that's what's yeah. going to happen. God, three Death Blossoms, nine Death Blossom kills is a pretty good map out of TK Thrifty. Yeah. Seeing as he only got two at the end and then went on to kill people other ways, he got four, three, and two. Which, four and three is amazing, and ooh, you'll take any time you can get it, because Absolutely. the fight's just going to go your way. That's a 20-0 to zero Lee Jang Tower coming out of Sadistic, who are, uh... Oh yeah, I realize we don't, we don't always play a third map if the... I was I was kind of expecting the third map just because, but yeah, You're so twenty points. But we're not competitive. This is the baddie league. <laughs> so now we've got Hanamura, and I feel like this is one of the maps that a team either succeeds at on the first point or fails terribly. There's not a lot in the middle. Or sorry, the yeah, first this point. Is... This is definitely one of my least favorite maps in the game, and like I think it's actually I think it's a really good map. I just don't like it. Yeah, I I feel the same way. Uh, like, whether I'm on offense or defense, it just feels so stressful. No matter what's going on, I, I I don't think there's any map where I'm like no one in this game knows what they're doing more often than I feel on Hanamura. Exactly. There's so many open or access points to that final point to try and cap. Yet for the defensive team, they've just got two areas that they can come come out to, and it's just so close to the respawn room. I think uh, Bone Zone, with the type of coordination that they've had in the other games, even if they haven't necessarily had the same focus, can really highlight the possibility of a win for them on this map. Because coordination sometimes on this map, when it comes to the second point, just means the world as long as you can at least get to the first point so maybe the damage focus necessary on the first point whereas the coordination more necessary on the second point i don't know if you have any thoughts on that i kind of see bone zone doing yeah. a little bit better here yeah, we'll see um curious if we're going to see any different picks coming out here i think that'll Really change how I think it. So far, TK50 is hovering the offensive mail. We'll see if he sticks with it. I know he's fairly vocal about liking the May on this map and the two, the two point maps in general. He's a big fan of May, whether it's offense or not. Yeah, so far we've got uh, 2 2 2 out of both sides. Actually, yeah, 2 2 2 out of both sides. See yeah. what each. Um, to, do. So, to me, the most telling pick here, Albino Joe, back on the D.Va, I really like that. There was, I mean, it's, it's a small sample size, but a much less competitive second map of Li Zhang when he was not playing that D.Va. It's just something that their team seems to match a lot better with, with U-Tech on a dealer, Albino Joe on his best hero. So, I'm happy they went back to that. Yeah. yeah I think it means a lot like more. The Diva's the kind of pick that I feel like right now you could be a one trick on if you find. Yeah, she's very strong right now. Even swapping her as a third tank instead of um, a second damage dealer on any map will still. She provides a lot of damage. Ooh, an ice ball! Cuts on the off gym. Jim. Jim takes a and lot of damage, but not how I expected that pick to go. 
Yeah. Uh, block me off from my team. Okay, I'll kill Salvo. That sounds like a good time. Uh, Tree is off fighting on his own. His team is capitalizing on that pressure created. They pushed into the choke, and now they're all going onto the left side. Gonna look for a push in. And uh, Salvo oh. rushes out of the point, but he just gets turned and killed. Yeah, if he could have actually rammed someone, that would have been much more, because it was likely going to be a, a death on one of the squishies. But no such luck. Uh, I don't even think that the point's contested aside from um, him landing on the point and then pretty much dying instantly. Tree gets beaten down by a Jim's hammer. Fly a little bit higher, Birdie. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good situation for. Oh, jeez, the salvo! <laughs> Again! Holy You're Reinhardt! You gotta... Eventually, you gotta play tank Reinhardt, bro. <laughs> and, um. Old, uh, old economy is. Really fucking good out of Bones on idea. They're sitting on four and close on the remaining two. Whereas there's only one, and now TK50 gets picked. That, this has just been pick city so far out of Sadistic Autistic. Yeah, Bone Zone has this this first point, they're just so much more coordinated on. They're even focusing damage, it looks like when they're supposed to be. They're giving up this first point to defend overall the and contest. Yeah, um, alts have started to get close out of Sinistic Autistic, and now they're going for the full push. Several charges in, full tranquility to get popped to start this, but a big zoning goes out to get there before oh, he dies. Oh, Salvo! This is looking good out of Sinistic Autistic, but there's a Graviton Surge only going to pick Albino Joe into it, who's going to get a nice self-destruct there. He's going to clear the point off and buy his team in time to reject. Tree sets up the Rocket Barrage. But not yeah, get no one's fallen out of Boon Zone, and three members have fallen for Sadistic Autistic. Yeah, it looks like Sadistic Autistic forced their hand just a little bit too hard there. And that was a really... We were talking about zoning Diva ult earlier. That was a perfect zoning Diva ult out of the final Joe. Because it bought his team time to reestablish and then retake that point. Without giving up any objective time. Yeah, we see Jim go down. So, with one less tank, we might see a successful push come out of... Sadistic Autistic. Yes, yeah, Sadistic all setting up from this right side here, the cut numbers. Uh, Jim will have it all if he gets back in time, though. But, oh! oh no. Four, four down. Kills. This might be the, the final chink in the armor for Bone Zone, as no one is near the point. Jim's, Jim's here. Back. He wants to be a hero, but he's gonna just give up some ult charge for free. And it looks like that's gonna be a cap out of Sadistic Autistic. And there we go, it doesn't matter if you play a three and a half good miss defense. You still have six and a half to play on the second point. Fuck it, Hanamura, man. Yeah, defense so hard right now. They look so good up until that point though. The the alts, I think, having all of them or most of them down really hurt them uh, for that last push. They weren't really, I guess, expecting that hard of a push to come out from the yeah, statistics. They, they couldn't afford Jim to get picked as early as he did there. Exactly. But now we see yeah. see a pretty standard defense. Everyone's kind of just yeah, this could be out. really explosive. This is actually going to be we're uh, we're at six all for this contest. It's only three from Bone Zone. This could be their best chance for the entire game. And there's the ground time surge. Just it only gets Jib, but there comes the self destruct pops. It does not get anyone going. Gets Teamix. Jim does fall. Teamix thirty is low. Oh. Yeah, they've got a really good zone with all those zones, and now they have established on the points. This is autistic, picking off anyone that comes in. Now, here you're popping the transcend just to be safe. But that was just so clean out of Sadistic Autistic. A really quick, clean cap out of Sadistic Autistic on that second point. Looked very coordinated. All of those alts really helped. There were alts sitting on Bone Zone there. Yeah, there's just a better engage on Sadistic Autistic. And not surprised, this is Tree coming in on the flank after his team had set things up, get some good rocket damage to start the fight. Experience tranquility. Yeah, just and applying yeah, damage and some really spot-on shots. That's how you know it was a good play out of the era. When your play of the game comes immediately after you had dropped your alt. 
Yeah. Entry, uh, a lot of damage done coming out of his team. So that's just something that we can expect out of Tree. Whatever champion he's playing, he's usually up there for damage. Yeah, so only one map remaining. Already a pretty decisive win out of Sadistic Autistic, up 40 to 10 currently, with the chance to Select. really turn this into a full blowout if they can get a defensive hold here. We see Salvo. Looks like he up. Oh, he was hovering the Sombra. Uh, I was excited. I want to keep seeing that champ because the alt interaction is really interesting. The AOE silence, if well placed, just completely wrecks an enemy team. So it makes it for really interesting uh, uh, games just to watch and, and spectate. Thirty right now looks like he's on the Widowmaker. He's gonna uh, switch. You think so? Definitely. I don't know. It would it would be interesting to see Widow on uh, this map. That uh, would be the culmination the of all of our thirty wants to show off memes we've had for the past like year. Would be him just picking some offensive Widow on Hanamura. Hey. I, I started in some uh, Widowmaker, and she's actually not as difficult to play as I really expected for the other times I was playing her. And if done correctly, can just wreck an enemy team. But on offense, doesn't seem like there's a lot of opportunity to get that uh, line of sight that's necessary. There's some so, creative ways you can play her on the like, I don't think it's bad on offense, it's just, it would be very funny. <laughs> I'm starting to think it's actually gonna happen. Yeah, I, I think they're doing it, because time started and he's on it. 30 Widowmaker, the only DPS for his team. Oh, I was not expecting that. They've got two healers, three tanks, and a Widowmaker. Very aggressive push coming out. Jim going super ham, but U-Tech is going to get picked. Uh, I'm not sure if he got killed with that ice ball or what. Yeah, Jim gets taken down as well. So, just not, not a super successful push. I feel like they need a little bit more damage to try and break through uh, this first choke point. Yeah, they, they, I'm, I didn't catch how Utec died there. They needed him not to die, though, because Jim was setting up to kind of be the backline record. But, ooh, but he gets to pick on about Yodio, and suddenly that Widowmaker pick is just by itself, because that was a nice man to defend. Oh. The wall doesn't get the split, and Albino Joe rushes onto the point, which... None of the bones on are on. Yeah, that. And now bones are that wall was really painful. Pancakes. Because three people were on top of it, and they could get through. How far do you think TK Drifty is going to chase away from the point? <laughs> as far as he wants to to get the kill. He gets thirty, but that might not be worth it. That's two notches given up. He's going to do many things to buy some time here, but he's going to yeah, die he's again. Go this should oh. be a kill. No one can get over the wall. He's buying a lot of time for his team. And yeah, no, no one else. Salvo on oh, the Salvo. Creeper. So they are buying time, but there's five people on the map. Four. And oh people just keep <laughs> dropping for Sadistic Autistic and that, yeah. That's eight minutes to cap the second point here. Yeah, that was really coordinated coming out of Bone Zone. Uh, Splinter immediately gets grabbed by Ball of Sexy, and Sexy, very Sexy Alt, clearing the point. Big whole hog. But Jim oh. put the hammer down, get the kill on about here you are. But Zella picks up a two kill on the other side of the fight. Not looking yeah, a lot of bolts traded. Defense. And... Ooh, Albino just gonna clear off this point though. A nice ice wall save. I believe saves some lives there. Yeah, it did. Yeah. So Albano's only going to go five time here. Yeah, that barrier actually kept Crystallize alive, who was standing right in front of that ult. So a really good hold out of Sadistic Autist. Or sorry, Bone Zone. Going to be a lot of ults going into the next fight. Four on three. The playbooks are kind of open here. Yeah. Ooh. Thrifty, freezing people in, trying to murder them as 
It looks like 30 was trying to kill her from the other side, and no one's. Oh, Splinter's dropping. Jim's Splinter low. Goes down, does not get his ult off. Yeah, looks like an unsuccessful push as they want to regroup. Yeah, they make the right call. They don't go in there and give up more ult charge for free. They know they have a lot of ult here. They don't want to botch this fight. Yeah, Sexy is really. Ball of Sexy is really close on his ult. And there's. Otherwise, when he gets his, there's four on each side. <laughs> Splinter fails to jump into the window there. And a nice ice wall is going to stop the transcendence push briefly. But two kills by 30. A healer and a tank down for the defense. And now Splinter going apeshit on this back line. But no one is on the Zenyatta until now. Sorry, Cat's the there. there. But a lot dead. For the bone zone, TK50 again buying time though, and that's a much bigger deal here on the second point. But yeah, and he can't actually stay on the point as his wall didn't save him. He was knocked away from it, and it landed the wrong. Wall sexy is here. He's gonna buy more time than TK50 is able to playing that tank. Jim only knocked down sexy, but Salvo's there on the back line. Salvo applied a lot of damage in that back line to keep those numbers either low or off. Crystallize now the only one as Tree runs onto the point to continue to contest. Yeah. People dying one by one, and... But it's looking like this turned into a numbers advantage for the defense here. As yeah, really slowly. 30 ran away the from the point really far. Oh, well, by and... tosses the mech high, gets the kill on the CKF50, but I don't think it has the only one on the point. He's trying to keep off on this left side. No one wants to play this point right now. But now Albino Joe goes down. Yeah, Splinter moving really oh, oh, far forward to take him down. And it looks like it's almost a wipe. Oh, that's, oh, that's a big one for that CKS Ripley. That might be the whole point here. The only thing is, there's, there's five minutes left yet. And if this continues, I, I feel like at some point they're going to fail on this defense. Well, it looks like in the meantime, Bones are still content to keep going for the Zerg Rock, where they have had a lot of individual number advantages. Both beats get dropped, and that's a big 3k out of the Bone Club. See, this guy doesn't get pushed back. This is the only one on the point, and he's gonna go down. Oh, well, the Warrior gets taken down immediately down. as he jumps on that point. Jim wants none of that. And that oh, dropped like his hammer minutes. in his face. But, uh... Going to be Bone Zone, not the pop-up for Sadistic Autistic, in the win there. And Jim gonna get the play of the game here on Reinhardt. He's had a few really big calls. This might be the yep. one right if he needs. It is. He's just throwing down a lot of damage, hitting everyone. And here, and bam. Valkyrie just doesn't want any. Gets dunked. So, does so. that mean the team went, teams went even tonight? No, that'll be a 40 Thanks points for Sadistic support. Autistic to 20 points from the Bone Zone Club. Oh, okay. So, a convincing win, but not as big of a blow as we've seen in some of our games. But Sadistic can definitely still feel very happy about that. Yeah, that ends up putting them even further into the lead uh, with 184 and Bone Zone at 131. So, if Mercy Shore can do well against April Wizards, Bone Zone will actually be in second after the standings tonight. All right. Well, that's going to do it for game one, guys. So we're going to be coming to the stream in just a moment. Switching streamers. We'll be heading on to game two. As we mentioned, April Wizards versus Mercy Shore. So don't touch that browser.